Toby's Room is uh, the story of a man who actually in, in the novel hardly appears, uh, uh, Toby Brooke. Uh, he is a very brave, very compassionate man uh, with a hidden life that people don't know about and he dies in the middle of the First World War in mysterious and tragic circumstances. It's not the usual World War I death by any means. And uh, the reader um, gets to know him basically through the minds of the other characters. But the other characters, uh, his sister Eleanor, uh, her lover Paul, their friend Kit Neville, uh, they think they know Toby, but in fact they don't know him at all well. The last third of the novel is set in uh, Queen Mary's Hospital in Sidcup, uh, which was a hospital devoted exclusively to facial injuries and had, by this stage of the war, not, not 1917, had over a thousand beds um, and where um, artists from the Slade worked with uh, surgeons who were more or less inventing plastic surgery on a day-to-day -day basis. And Kit Neville, um, one of the three main characters in the novel, has returned from the war with horrific facial injuries. His friends don't recognise him. And uh, he uh, is there, he meets Eleanor there, and it's during his time in the hospital under morphine and hallucinating that he starts to explore his relationship with Toby Brook and finally manages to face up to what happened uh, on the day that Toby Brook died. The period of the First World War intrigues me as a writer, I suppose, for the reasons it's intrigued countless other writers, that uh, it's the shock of the loss of innocence, uh, the, the, the contrast between the idealism of the people volunteering and the reality of life in the trenches. And I feel that the Somme for us is uh, like Pearl Harbor or 9-11 for the Americans. It's one of these uh, uh, absolutely iconic moments when a whole nation's perception of what life is like changes. And of course that does fascinate any novelist. And the other benefit for, of a novelist for the First World War and the Second World War is that the entire nation is being disrupted. So the individual character's choices are his or her own, but they are also related to this appalling catastrophe that is overtaking their society. And I think it's very difficult to capture that in a contemporary novel, because most of the time we live in little capsules, you know, our family, our friends, our work colleagues, and the capsules get, you know, rub along fairly well, but they are not connected. In a war, the whole society is focused on one thing, and therefore, to a novelist, the whole society becomes something that you can grasp and do something with.